that, um, oh, you know. Oh, man, she's going to start the story and don't start it. Finish it. Okay, go ahead. Hey, I can't do go it. Ahead. I can't do it. You know, okay, sometimes we got to think you. about the effect of something I got do, you. You know, it's always a cause what is and it? effect. What is it? What? I'm not going to be the cause. What is it? Have an effect. Effect. Mm-hmm. I got you. What is that? As journalists, you know, but I got to put on my journalist hat. What is that? Oh, we gotta we gotta protect our story. Count up the cost. So you go right ahead, Miss Vicky. And you, we gotta count up the cost. Yeah, but I'm okay, saying okay. Count up the cost. Yeah. Okay, you say count up the cost. I say protect your source. You go right ahead. Okay, now let's mm-hmm. get into our subject matter because and all the other stuff. But we not go sit here and talk about coronavirus again all day. No. Okay. So outside of coronavirus, there's other stuff. Going on in the world, okay. <laughs> um, it is still women. Uh, I would, you know what? Month. As you sub, as you sub, as you subheading or uh, what am I trying to transitioning? As you're transitioning to another topic, I just wanted to say I'm so glad we're getting ready to change the subject because you're saying how people are stressed <laughs> out from the coronavirus. I'm stressed out. Well, I'm not stressed out, but it stresses me out talking about it all the time. So, you know, I'm going to take my mind off of it sometime. I don't want to think about that, talk about that. As long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. So, yeah. Okay. Now, move forward. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, before I move forward, just one more thing for those that are thinking. You know, um, pray, um, read books, color, journal, have your own party. Me personally, right I'm a DJ there we go. DJ D has been putting so go to go to my personal page. Every day I've been putting a DJ musical motivation moment and I pick out a song that's very uplifting. So please follow me on my page and watch me give encouraging DJ songs. So I'm DJ every day. Okay, and then I play my music really, really loud and be up in here partying. Okay. That that cuts me that that helps my stress me not be stressed. Anyway. Uh, Madam C J Walker. We're talking about Women's History Month. Vicky and I wanted to, Miss Vicky and DJ Vickers, we wanted to combine, continue combining Black History Month and Women's History Month together. So, um, Madam C.J. Walker, if you guys have Netflix, um, there is a series, uh, I think that started uh, last Friday or Friday before last. It's a mini series. Uh, with, it's called Self Made, and it's a story about Madam C.J. Walker. So just to give you a little information. Very good, very um, good movie. Huh? It was a very good yes, movie. Yes, it was. Good. Yes. Um, I'm glad I watched it because I knew about Madam C.J. Walker as far as history and knowing that she was a philanthropist, an entrepreneur, and all this, and she uh, created the hair products, but I didn't know the whole story. So um, anyway, she was an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, and an activist. Madam C.J. Walker rose from poverty in the South to become one of the wealthiest African-American women of her time. She used her position to advocate, hey, y'all know that's my work. I'm an advocate. There we go. (laughs) Um, (laughs) She used her position to advocate for advancement of black Americans and for ending and for an end to lynching. Oh, I didn't know she was a part of that. Wonderful. Um, So I'll just leave it there because we got a lot more to do. If you want to know more about Madam C.J. Walker, please look her up, read about her. Uh, we would encourage you to go to Netflix, for those that have Netflix, to watch um, the mini series they made for, about her. Uh, it's with, um, what is her name? Oh, I can't remember her name. The person that's saying she did. Huh? No, that's Tiffany her sister. The other, no, that's the huh? one that played her sister. I'm talking about the no, person that played her played her daughter. daughter. I'm sorry, wrong person. She played her daughter. I want to know who played the actual Madam C.J. Walker. I can't remember her name right now. Oh. Was it Levine? What's her name? Laverne? Levine? Anyway, anyway, but we don't want to give you the wrong information. Anyway, it's so on Netflix. Please watch it. Um, I want to tell a joke. See, I've been wanting all week. Now I'm getting all serious. Forget it. Netflix. I've been paying for Netflix for maybe two, three years. Okay. I started paying for Netflix and having it when it was nine dollars and ninety nine cents, and now it then went up to eleven and something dollars and some cents. So that's how long I've been having it. 
And I have been, and I watch it every now and then. But ever since we don't have this uh, quarantine, when I get tired of watching my news and my to my soaps, I've been watching Netflix. So I've been having a Netflix time. I watch Self Made. Now that I find uh, Black Lightning, been watching that. Now I'm going to watch All American. And I'm in the process of watching Crip Camp. And that's about the disability revolution, uh, evolution, revolution, uh, advocacy, and how it started. And it was produced by President Barack Obama and Michelle Obama. There's some other executive producers. But we'll talk about that next week. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Uh, what is it? Huh? Huh? You want to add something? No. Uh-huh. If I did, I would have added. Okay. Well, I thought you said something. Look at here, Vicky. We okay, can't be fighting in front of. Oh, okay. We can't be fighting in front of our audience. We love each other. We love each other. You can't yeah. hear me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay, the census. We've been sharing, and giving you information about the census. So we've already discussed what it is. Uh, who is required to respond? Let's read that. So we're going to give you tidbits about the census every time we do the show. And I took my, I did my census this week. So please take it. Um, when they sent it on the envelope, I did mine online. So you could do it through the mailer that they send you. You could do it online or you could do it on phone. And I chose to do mine online, and it's really quick. Cause, you know, they just ask you a few questions, and that's it. Who is required to respond? Everyone living in the United States and its five territories is required by law to be counted in the 2020 census, and I did not know that till now. Why is it, why it's required? Getting a completed, accurate census count is critically important. That's why you res, your response is required by law. If you do not respond, the U.S. Census Bureau will follow up the person to collect your response. Oh, shut up! Why is this why is this census so important? The results are used to determine how much funding. This is important, people. The results are used to determine how much funding local communities receive for key public services and how many seats each state gets in Congress. State and local officials also use census counts to draw boundaries for congressional, state, legislative, and school districts. So in short, your participation helps to provide funding for programs that we may need, such as medical programs, programs for children or child care, single mothers or people with disabilities, the list goes on and on um, for each city. So that's why it's important, and you you doing that makes a difference. People yeah. in special living situations, okay, hold on. People in some special living situations may have questions about how to respond. This includes students, service members, people in correctional facilities, people who move on census day, April 1st, and people who do not have fixed addresses. Okay. Visit the Who to Count for information on how people in these groups will be counted. All right. So we'll discuss a little bit more next week. Uh, moving on, what else can we talk about before we get into our well, subject? Well, one thing I wanted to mention is about the census. Um, the yes, census um, actually has been postponed. Uh, since okay. they call it, they said suspend it for now, um, okay. but it's until April 1st, and then um, we will find out if we're going to move forward, if they're going to suspend it a little bit further down the line. But okay. for now, census, as far as people working, so we did promote uh, the census of hiring, which I'm pretty sure most people know they're not by now, but just to, um, you know, give you the information since we did promote that they were hiring. They're suspending their hiring process right now until April 1st. So if you're still interested, keep up with what's going on, and we'll see if it's going to start rolling again on April 1st. Okay, so um, we'll be able to give more information next week. Yeah, the process of the census, is it is a process. You have to do background check, training, all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't mean that you will start working April 1st. It's just the process will start back because you have to do background checks and all these things. So okay. um, for me, I was supposed to start my training in May. So, um, you know, 
by then, you know, hopefully May, June, we're going to be back on track. So, okay. in the community. Yeah, because April 1st is Wednesday. Yeah, April 1st is Wednesday, so we'll know some more information, or Vicky will know some more information, hopefully, about next Sunday. Okay. And please take it. I did mine. Okay. Um, where are we at? Okay, so um, let's talk about um, effects of domestic violence. So we left off on talking about the short, the short-term effects of domestic violence of abuse of children, and we left off at teens. And then we were going to go into what are the long, long-term effects of domestic violence or abuse on children. But before we go there, I want to turn it over to Miss Vicky. Because Vicky and I have been doing some research, and she was very well knowledgeable, and she explained to me very well, so I'm going to explain it. Going back to coronavirus for a second, um, it's been in the media how the coronavirus has caused domestic violence to be on a rise. So I'm going to turn it over to Vicky and let her share. Go ahead, Miss Vicky. Well, could have gave me a little. You could have gave them a little more information than that, I wanted you to do it. But okay. But um, what we were um, talking about earlier was um, how people are handling, um, you know, being in abusive situations and how they occur. So there's different uh, scenarios. Um, if someone is already presently was already in a domestic violence relationship and they're going to work and then all of a sudden they're telling them that they're quarantined, that they have to stay home. Well, that put them in an awkward position. They were already in an uncomfortable position because they were still with their um, abuser. But that space of time being away from them was probably a stress reliever for them. Um, and then it can increase the abuse because the, uh, you know, they can start being victimized because of the simple fact that they're home. And then, the, you know, a lot of times they uh, make all kind of accusations like, oh, you got fired. Oh, um, you just lazy. You know, just use different reasons to, um, um, you know, victimize the uh, victim. And then um, another thing, uh, the, um, Domestic violence is on the rise also, or could be, and it actually is, we have read up on some stuff, um, because uh, a lot of people are getting laid off, so it can be the perpetrator, because, you know, remember the perpetrator can be male or female. Um, a lot of yeah. times we say, uh, we, we refer to the victim as her, she, but it can be him as well. I know a lady that used to punch her husband in the face when they're driving, when he pissed her off. And he would just take, it, you know, and she had, and she hit hard too. So it, it, there's men and women that are abusers. However, um, the the um, uh, it has in, it has definitely um, this COVID nineteen has affected um, a lot of people in that area of domestic violence. And then you have those that maybe weren't abusive and became abusive. Um, because of the fact right. that they're home together with their spouses and they're irritable, and then one thing leads to another. Um, a lot of the children are home. The kids, the kids are home with their parents, and parents are not used to being home with kids all day, every day, outside of the weekend. <laughs> yeah, that part. And mm-hmm. um, so that's very annoying for a lot of parents. I've heard a parent say, you know, when she goes to work, it's like a stress reliever. She has two stair steps, you know. Um, I heard another employee say, um, hopefully they don't send them home because they don't want to work from home. They prefer to work from work, you know, and um, and that was a male, you know, the other one was a female. So, you know, you don't know people's circumstances, but um, this is a time where we have to be prayerful for one another right. and um, be sensitive as well because a lot mm-hmm. of people are in their emotions you know, right. and you don't know where they, you know, why they're in the emotion. Um, you don't know what they're going through in their personal faith at home. You know, some people don't want to go home. 
You know, some kids don't want to go home. Some kids don't want to go home because they know there ain't no food there. You know, and then right. they hear and they parents arguing, fussing, and cussing. 